Yeah. Yeah. We in November, bitches. We're near the end of the calendar year. And to wrap up, uh, quite interesting, 2019. No, no. Save it for December. I'm going to save that for December. All the energy, the anger, emotion, frustration is going to go in one thirty. And how I felt about this year. Right now, this is a phone. This phone sucks. It's gonna lay from the face up to face down. That's the most pent up anger I can put up on this glorious occasion that we're in. When what used to be one of my favorite pay per views from WWE. It used to be my favorite. You know why? Because I used to see my favorite wrestler tag t together so they can face off against the heels and just show their stuff and just gel with each other that we rarely see on national TV, so this would be fun. Now it just comes into a reason to just get everybody in for brand split reasons other than interesting storytelling or decent character work. So, yeah. Like Survivor Series was like that all star weekend. Some of WrestleMania were like the big finals or or, or or conference finals and Royal Rumble is just a huge lottery. Like who will fight to get their biggest spot of them all? Like now this is twenty four hours after the Crown Jewel event that I will review for later on in the future before Survivor Series that's coming up November twenty fourth. So right now, let's go through it. We started off with Brock Lesnar. Obviously, they're going to address the Cain Velasquez victory. They just came with the fake punches, fake punches over the corner, over the corner. Cain Velasquez was a bit, getting a bit of offense in. Brock Lesnar picked up the uh, the lock, that forearm lock that pressures out your shoulder until that fucks you up. Kimura lock until... Uh, Cain Velasquez tapped out, and the match was under five minutes, so nobody cared. And he came up with Paul Heyman addressing that his client is pissed after what occurred, and then Rey Mysterio come around with a steel chair, hitting him with numerous headshots. It was a fun-ass moment in a boring-ass pay-per-view that kind of en ended the match in a pretty good note, seeing what Rey Mysterio is going to do in the future. And uh, Brock Lesnar has officially quitted WWE uh, Friday Night SmackDown on Fox because of brand split reasons. And this is the only way he can appear on Raw without any repercussions, except he's still WWE Champion. So, yeah. They still they didn't even address that they now have a Universal Champion and the WWE Champion on the same brand until now Brock Lesnar. So, we, we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. Uh, the segment was fine. Brock Lesnar came. Paul Heyman just tossed, just was spewing out some Donald Trump trigger words, and <laughs> I'm talking about Spanish, and coming around, ending the promo like that. It was interesting, but it was not that interesting. No one cares. They had to make the world champion. If this was like, oh, this was personal, like Rey Mysterio ruined my chances of being WWE champion of Cain Velasquez, that they wouldn't allow. Like, was a good call to make Velasquez lose. But, by God, just make him quit? Survivor Series is just around the corner. Why can't you just officially challenge Rey Mysterio for the world title where it's literally multi-brand? But I understand you want to make this personal. You need ratings on Raw. I think SmackDown sucks, but it's at least a bit more watchable than watching a three-hour show. Then a majority of their matches at least get three, two to three commercial breaks. Next up was uh, the women's champ SmackDown Women's Championship after Nikki Cross won a six-pack challenge, and they kept hyping on this matchup because Nikki Cross is already a pretty popular babyface, and Bailey's a heel now after what happened at Hell in a Cell. So she got a new look. 
She still wrestles the same as she was as a babyface, except she's going outside. She's tossing Nikki Cross around everywhere, while Sasha Banks is just now the corner man. She's just there to help whenever uh, Bailey needs help. So she stops vertical suplexes from the outside. She decides to intervene when it's a close ball. She she still uses the elbow job, even though I think the elbow drop is a babyface move. But I remember Dolph Ziggler using that for some of his moves. So I don't think that matters. But that still nearly got the match win. Other than ripping off that 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 fucking scroll rip off scroll crushing finale. That's the first finisher the Miz used before he used the scroll crushing finale and something sort of familiar to I think Jericho's finisher he had before because that used to be the lion salt in the walls. And he also had some smashing maneuver when it comes to using an underhand tactic and now. Uh, Bailey uses it because uh, somehow it's 2019. People use it a lot more crazy finishers, but think she's so boring in the ring. Uh, you just gave her some head smashing and maneuver to win the match. This match didn't tell much of a story. Kiss came with Shayna Baszler just coming around, attacking Sasha Banks behind her back, and then attacking Bailey. Coming around using her submission holds, they were shouting out NXT because NXT is going to be appearing on it on uh, NX, on the Survivor Series. So obviously they went into something involving that, and it was kind of cool because I'm a big Shayna Baszler fan. I love Shayna Baszler's wrestling style. I feel like her takeover match has gotten a bit subpar. I think she's been holding the NXT title for way too long now. And it's a bit boring, but she's still an interesting wrestler. But by God. I wonder how you're going to ruin this hype of one of the most beloved parts of pro wrestling to this day. Even though I think it's quite overrated and I think NXT hadn't gotten a big luster since 2015. I feel like... I feel like this should be uh, something you could have done a few years ago when you had Balor Joe rude Nakamura when you had more primitive names on NXT and the only names that are notable are in it, on NXT or because of controversy or irrelevance. Finn Balor is irrelevant at this case even though he's still a household name and Smarks, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly and uh, Roderick Strong, Keith Lee, Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair, Iowa Shirai. It's interesting, but people still don't know about these guys saying people don't want to air on a Wednesday to watch NXT. And plus, AEW is going to be on. So, obviously, people are going to be watching something that's not a developmental show. It's a legit show with legit stars. So, kind of get where I'm going with this. No one cares. This is a, at least something. It's something different other than SmackDown and Raw. If they try to make this a year-long thing for next year, thanks NXT guys are kind of wishing that they had more uh, airtime. This could boost up the ratings, desperately so. Because if you look back at ratings, rating charts from 2010 on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, they desperately need it because they need to get something like that again. Next up, Sami Zayn coming over to a promo saying, oh, it's crazy, but then the NXT com coming up and the uh, Brock Lesnar thing that's going on. Just bringing up his official reaction. Shinsuke Nakamura wasn't there in his corner or anything. Hyping up Shinsuke Nakamura, your Intercontinental Champion. You were literally the mouthpiece of the second most important guy with the belt. And you couldn't even make him have a bit of a cameo. And then we have Keith Lee and Matt Riddle from NXT coming over along. And just saying, hey, how you doing? It's like coming around trying to surprise you and feel like you, I used to be part of you guys. Remember when I was NXT champion? Until Kevin Owens ripped my heart and soul on TakeOver? Kind of stabbed my back as soon as I won that shit against Neville. Nobody remembers? Cool, get your ass fucked by a moonsault and a bicycle knee to the head. Immediately into the middle of the ring. Like, Sami Zayn, you are in an arena, bitch. You are not in a... You are not in a dome. You are not in a dome. The wrestling ring is not a world where, oh, there's nowhere else to run. I am cornered in a wrestling ring with thousands of people in attendance. And you're telling me, they even do this for a 24-7 title, and I'm sick of it. You can run out, go to a car, hide in a nearby hotel, hide by a store, do something. 
instead of the same old trope, we're going to run to the middle of the ring so we can take this bump and tell, show these guys what we can do. Everybody watches it. Almost anybody else watches NXT. You're telling me that this bullshit still has to happen? And Sami Zayn that's shown himself to be the most smart aleck, sarcastic, dipshit on the roster. That's a more interesting, compelling talker than anybody else on the roster. You're telling me he can't think through and notice, oh, these guys are literally going to kick my ass because I'm from SmackDown. Oh, wait, maybe I should fucking run out of the arena. <laughs> then Keith Lee and Matt Riddle fist bump. This was a boring segment. No one cares. And Sami Zayn hasn't been relevant since 2016. Next up, uh, Tommaso Ciampa coming around in uh, Miss TV. And the special guest was supposed to be the new Universal Champion, Bray Wyatt. And they just officially said he's not supposed to be, he's not going to be here tonight. After just showing us a few minutes of footage on what happened on Crown Jewel. And most of it was a full-length footage. Ken Velasquez match. Full-length footage of the match. Then what happened with Rey Mysterio? Footage is a set of a couple small clips. Thanks, you faggots at the network, you idiots. Why don't you just show short clips? Oh, he has the... He taps him out with his submission move. Rey Mysterio comes with a chair. Brock Lesnar's angry but still world champion. They did the same thing with Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt, and no one cared. Fox got an anywhere match. Just wait until next year until that ends off ref stoppage, faggot. No one cares about this. So Miz is just there, and then he brought up Tommaso Ciampa. And, I, and I'd say I almost popped for a bit because I like Ciampa. No one will survive! Nick, and the, 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 there wasn't that much of a compelling... Anything with this except they just went into uh, Champa res wrestling in skinny jeans and boots in a match that took over 15 minutes off near falls, near falls, uh, reversals, bicycle knees to the face, and Inzaguri from the outside. Uh, Champa still winning while wearing civilian clothing with a tiger. With some kind of double hook power bomb into a backbreaker. Or tiger bomb into a backbreaker. And it's a cool ass move, but it looks better on midgets. Not somebody like full size man like The Miz. In a match that makes no sense, except every NXT star gotta get over just so they can display that they're awesome. We know Matt Reddle and Keith Lee. Ooh, you know Tommaso Ciampa. No Johnny Gargano, or guys that are, that, you know, are more notable in the mainstays. Oh my god. At least Champa winning was nice, I guess. I mean, you want to get the NXT guys over. Then we had Fire to Desire against Tegan Knox and Ray Ripley that just faced off against... Uh, didn't she just face off against Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's title? I don't know. I did not get to watch NXT recently, so... Sorry if education is more important than me reviewing this dumb shit. And it just came off of a squash match and Fire to Desire was just losing. And I think they attacked Carmella and Dana Brooke afterwards. Uh, no, it was Dana. It was Bianca Belair coming out of nowhere. Shockingly, did not use her hair to whip the shit out of these white bitches. Uh, it's for revenge sake. It's not because of her gimmick having a long ass piece of hair. And uh, in slavery, uh, coming around just looking at the raw strength of this bitch and just chucking Carmella into some kind of carry on storage compartment, and then attacking Dana Brooke. It was a crazy move, and of course, Ripley and Taken Knox won. Uh, uh, took it over for Fire to Desire. So that was cool, I guess. No one really cares. Next up was a segment involving Daniel Bryan and Triple H. Bringing over what's going to happen. It was crazy, man. I mean, I see. I mean, who would have thought of that? The COO's here. It's Matt and Rob, but I'm also responsible for NXT. Oh, shit. That's crazy. Oh, wow. I want young talent to come over. Oh, Vince. Oh, I want young talent. I want better young talent. Well, it happened. 
it was Adam Cole facing off against Daniel Bryan, and Bryan just put up, if I'm going to face Adam Cole, I'm going to face him off against, I'm going to face off against him for the NXT title. One of the only belts Daniel would never held in his career next to the 24-7 championship, and no, really, no one would count a job or belt. And 24-7 title, and the NXT title will be defended in a pretty good match against Daniel Bryan, Adam Cole. And everybody's like, oh, it gets a 9 out of 10, the show, because of the match and the NXT superstars coming up. And Brock Lesnar getting quitting while being world champion officially for this brand. Just so he can get his hands on Rey Mysterio. If you couldn't think of a dumber way to build up anything for your big pay-per-view, the final big pay-per-view of the year. Shining Wizard, a lot of reversals coming from the outside. It just ends up with Adam Cole ending it off with uh, Panama Sunrise. And a shining wizard to the back of the head to win. Daniel Bryan put up a decent match. It was a two commercial break. It took off um, most of the show. And obviously they win to see Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan. Some of my, one of my favorite wrestlers is Adam Cole. Because I think he's charismatic. He looks the build of a real superstar. Looks great. And he's been having tremendous matches on NXT if you haven't seen him. So please watch NXT for Adam Cole, baby. This was a good match, but this wasn't a saving grace for the show. This still gets a 5 out of 10. I felt like this I had a few decent gems. Seeing Matt, seeing some of the NXT superstars was a good thing. Triple H acting low-key, low-key sus like I'm the man behind this entire thing. And then saying, it will shoot. shots are fired. War has begun for a month. And uh, thought that would be a perfect way. Had a segue out to the end of the show with uh, Triple H just bringing up I love indie faggots. I am proud of it. I love midgets. Jordan Miles' t-shirt is going to be all black. And Mr. Popo is going to be on the back. <laughs> That's how bad I think this entire show. Even though I think it could have been cool. <clears throat> you get more of the NXT superstars that are more notable. And uh, you put them up Shane up. You've got your NXT Women's Champion. You got your NXT champion coming, but only Roderick Strong, no Bobby, no Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish for some apparent reason, even though the show was on a Friday. So I, I'm shocked. Uh, Bianca Belair was cool. Her coming out of nowhere and attacking Carmella and Dana Brooke was cool because I hate these bitches and I feel like they're ugly. The Bailey and Nikki Cross match was useless. There is no reason except they know they couldn't defend a title at Crown Jewel. So, uh, whatever. They have a match. And plus, they know they're going to do some kind of interbrand eight women tag thing come the pay per view, so no one cares. Uh, pretty much, they literally are still the Raw recap show. And we give a reason for us to watch Raw next week. So, any other than that, I did not like the SmackDown. I thought it had some great gems. It gets a 5 out of 10 regardless of the stuff that I find entertaining. Seeing Champa, Cole, Baszler, Riddle, uh, uh, Ridley and, uh, Riddle and, uh, Keith Lee. It, it was nice. Also seeing Riley Ripley and Dox was nice. Knox was good. It, it was good and there was at least one good wrestling match. So, yeah. Not not that impressive. It wasn't that entertaining, but I know there was some good stuff on it. SmackDown was a eh, show. And I know they're trying to build up because we're in the first SmackDown of the month. It is now November 2nd that I'm uploading. So <laughs> um, just be patient. And uh, thank you for watching my video. Comment, like, and subscribe. DST Nation. Or show, whatever you want to call it. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel, bitch. I'm not trying to make this a uh, uh, oh, big YouTube channel. Just something to keep the conversation going. Thank you for watching. And that would be most appreciative. You. And you gotta like and share this with some of your friends.